Hello, CFI. This is Brett Schwab with your July edition of the CFI Insider. And with me, I have Sarah Madison from our safety department. Thank you for having me, Brett. Yeah. Hi, Sarah. So if you don't mind, could you give us a real quick introduction of yourself? I actually started with CFI in the recruiting department and then moved over to safety. I am now the compliance manager and I oversee the logs department and CSA. Before coming on with CFI, I worked for a smaller trucking company in town, much smaller than CFI. It was kind of a one-man show in safety. So I have quite a bit of background knowledge in safety. So I'm excited to be on that team. Great. So logs department. So if you're not familiar with who I am, I, I'm currently the director of safety. I started here 25 years ago as a logs individual who it was a lot different back then. It was paper logs, paper logs. and it wasn't um, the electronic logs. It seemed a little tedious. But anyways, I started there. And then a year later, uh, I had no idea what was taking place on the second floor, but somebody invited me to see the war room and I fell in love with the uh, the war room uh, became a member of the operations team and spent 20 plus years there supporting our drivers. And then uh, now I'm supporting them differently and supporting you all as well and happy to be a part of the team. So yes, and we're happy to have you. Yeah. Typically, we'll start off with a safety message. Many of you are aware of right now, heat is a big uh, topic, right? We see that on the weather, they're talking about this heat dome uh, and people exp experiencing uh, heat related illnesses. They're talking about, you know, staying properly hydrated. Uh, and so, you know, we're going to provide you uh, a little deal from the CDC that kind of breaks down five different um, re heat related illnesses. Two of those that come to mind are heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Uh, while the symptoms seem very much uh, the same, there are a few things that make them very different and how you react or treat somebody uh, is also very different. For example, with heat stroke, you don't sweat much. Uh, you may be uh, dry or a little damp is the word they used, um, but you may also have a fever of 103 plus. You don't give anybody uh, water or anything to drink when you're treating that one. However, with heat exhaustion, you are sweating a lot, but you should also treat someone with um, plenty to drink. The other thing is hydration. A lot of people wait too long, right? They decide, hey, I'm going to hydrate while I'm out in the heat. And you should really be hydrating pretty much all day and all night is every opportunity you get, right? So I know you're working on your water intake. I am. So you should be pretty well um, usually hydrated. a Dr. Pepper drinker, so yeah. I'm trying to get on the water kick. <laughs> good. It's good to see. I, I have work to do myself on when it comes to that. There's a big event that's uh, going to take place in July. CVSA is hosting another one of their Operation Safe Driver Weeks. Yeah, it's actually July 9th through the 15th. They're going to be focusing on speeding. Also, some other things that they're focusing on is just unsafe driving behaviors in general. So that can be improper lane changes, passing on turns, uh, driving under the influence, influence, um, using a handheld device, not wearing your seatbelt. That's probably going to be caught more during the actual stop itself. That is the majority of what they're going to be focusing on. Uh, it's not just for commercial motor vehicle drivers either. It's going to be for passenger vehicles as well. So it's all of the motoring public. You know, supporting a new role. I'm like, well, I better read what this is, right? It happens every year. If they have a safe driver week every year. And uh, what's interesting, one thing I noticed is that it said, well, actual driven miles on the road has decreased by 13%. They're saying that fatality rate has increased by 24%. So that's a, something you wouldn't expect when you see less miles no. on the road. Last year, actually, they stopped 66,000 drivers. 30,000 of them were commercial motor vehicles. 36,000 were passenger vehicles. But they actually gave out 71,000 citations or warnings. Data shows traffic stops have actually reduced due to those, not just violations, but getting stopped by law enforcement. Yeah, so nobody likes being pulled no. over. However, every once in a while, it's good to have somebody stop you and remind you you aren't doing something uh, safe, right? right? Basically, 66 and 70, so 5,000 maybe other issues on each of those stops that they recognized to, to cite somebody or give yes. them a warning on. That's uh, one effort that the agency is using to try to identify unsafe behavior and find a way to correct it. What is it something that CFI does? So we actually have our event recorder team. It's managed by Greg Payne. What they're doing is they look at our cameras daily. 
they're calling drivers or coaching them. Um, they're bringing them in on the events that they're having if they need some additional hands-on, one-on-one training. The events that are coming in are the following distance. That's number one. And then speeding violations and harsh break. We're working our best to get those ones down as much as possible just through that coaching. The big three. Yes, those are the big three. Yeah, so we watch those pretty much daily, right? Every, yes, We every have a, a daily uh, huddle in the morning with the leadership team. And yes. we... I hate to call it armchair quarterback, but we do. We review, and when we have a camera event, we watch those as well. And it's it is um, it's a tough one to swallow, right? When you see that um, we have so many that aren't allowing enough space yes. between them and someone in front of them, and uh, you know we did talk about that right in our last safety meeting. There's three things that go on. I mean, your mind has to tell you, hey, this is what's happening. Yes. So there's a delay there. And then it says hit the brake and then the truck has to do its thing for the brakes to engage and then even slow down. We're starting to recognize we have drivers that aren't even giving themselves uh, that an chance. Out. Yeah, they don't have an out. How are carriers measured uh, whether they are a risky carrier or a safe carrier? So we actually are measured by our CSA score. What goes into that is every time a driver's out on the road, they get stopped by law, law enforcement, they get a safety inspection. So you'll either get a clean inspection or you get one with violations. Those violations and clean inspections, all of it together makes up our CSA score. What goes all into that CSA score would be unsafe, hours of service, crash, vehicle maintenance, fitness, hazmat, and drug and alcohol. Yeah, it's a big <laughs> so list. I hope I got those off. <laughs> right. Your score, mm -hmm. the agency posts that out there. Anybody can see it, right? Not all of those scores, but most of them, yes. Okay. Let's say uh, we have customers and they're looking at our scores. Our insurance company is looking at our scores. That can determine what freight we get. Um, if we're an unsafe carrier, obviously they're not going to let us have their freight if our CSA score is high. Everyone's probably pretty aware our hours of service score has gone pretty high, but it was due to, unfortunately, some of our ELD providers data was not working properly. It has been fixed. So in a short amount of time, we received a lot of those 14 hour rule violations. Within that short amount of time, that jumped our score tremendously. DOT unfortunately caught it before we could catch it. To be honest, looking at uh, our CSA or at least our daily violations for our service, they're they're fantastic. Oh, yes. I mean, Much they're really now. good. Probably one of the areas we've improved the most on. Yes. But the score isn't coming down no. as fast as we like. So Sounds to me like you can wreck your score pretty quick. How long does it take again to take that? So it can take up to two years. Two so years. even though, let's say you get 20 violations in two months for hours of service, it's going to take that full two years for those 20 violations to fall off. Even though in those two months, you could have had a score of 30 and it jumped you all the way to 80 just with those 20 violations, which 20 violations is a lot. We shouldn't have 20 violations in two months because the 14 hour rule violations are a very heavy hitter on our score. So you touched on a few things like the impacts, right? Mm -hmm. Insurance, customers offering freight opportunities. Yes, so a driver, whenever they are coming on with a carrier, whatever carrier they were with before, all their uh, inspections follow them. So it doesn't necessarily tell us points wise what each one of those were, but it does show us how many violations they had with every carrier they've been with. We will deny a driver that's coming on if they have 10 inspections and all of them had violations, we wouldn't be able to hire them. They're an unsafe driver to us. Unfortunately, that's one of the reasons why TSA is so important in getting clean inspections. That's also why the safety team spends a lot of time coaching drivers. We prefer that they learn to do it right here, right? Yes. I mean, we want them to hire on here, be a part of the family forever and retire with us. Yes. We don't want them to make all those mistakes. And then certainly if they feel we're not a fit for them, that they can continue their career driving a truck because we do need truck drivers, so. Yes. Sarah, I really appreciate you joining us. I know you guys do a lot of hard work. The whole team, the whole safety team, it's never a, 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 a slow day in yeah. that department. Um, so thank you for joining us. Thank you for just, having me. Yeah, yeah. just a couple uh, reminders out there is that the Heartland Driver Appreciation Calendar on Work Vivo uh, is updated uh, and under events. You can find out when they're having those appreciation 
events. And again, all drivers are welcome to those Heartland Appreciation events. So uh, if you can stop by and attend one, I'm sure they're happy to have you there. Lastly, uh, there'll be some work Viva Wednesday support sessions that will begin in July as well. Check out those events on Work Vivo for more information. Great tool, learning how to use it, be effective. Um, that's what's important. Sarah, again, thank you for joining us. And remember, be the captain of your ship and everybody be safe. Have a great week.